So it's now three days later. So I'm just tightening up these uh, screws on the primary chain case. The silicon, with a bit of luck, will have set now. So any um, silicon in the joint will have solidified and I can just sort of squeeze up on it by tightening up the screws. I've just put some oil in so the drain, sorry, the overflow level plug is dripping at the moment. I'll let that settle down and then uh, put the plug back in and should be done for now. The next thing is to finish the uh, timing. I've got a really ancient strobe which um, doesn't have an external power supply, it just works from the in line with the spark plug. And you got two connections. So it's pretty dim and it may not work at all, but uh, we'll give it a go. So the looks of this might work. So I'm going to take off the, the old rectifier and uh, put this on instead, give it a go. I know I should have a spanner on this end as well, but it's seems to be undoing okay. So an alternative is to put it like so. Just have one bolt, which would probably be fine. Might do that anyway. Need some airflow. This is going to dissipate 180 watts. That's uh, quite a lot. Let's just drill a hole in here. I'll just use this bit of scrap to. Uh, Stop me drilling into the frame. So that's six mil, which I think is probably about the same as this. Yeah, six mil. Good. So I've made up a stainless steel plate, which I hope will fit on here. Yeah, so the plan is that, that this will just stiffen the um, the backing for the the box, rather than just hanging it off one stud. I'm hoping this will just reinforce it. Okay, so I'm starting to get the electrics sorted out. Um, I've decided to use this uh, a generic rectifier um, xenodiode arrangement from regulator um, so I've obviously got that on now that's plumbed in I'm using the connector that came with it it's got four spades in it so I'll just put the uh, the old wires onto the spades for now and secured it to the coil just to stop it flapping about I remade the earth strap here and simplified it there were about four earth connections but I got it down to two um, the uh, boyer is attached here, and I'm still using the original condenser um, capacitor just to smooth the DC. So, so yeah, it's looking reasonably tidy. The um, boyer box is is there at the moment. I'm gonna, I think I've got a fuse box in order, just a, two small fuses. I might as well. I might well stick the fuse box up here. Um, I don't really need it unless I fit a battery, is my reasoning in a way. If anything shorts out, for instance, then it will just kill the engine anyway. So um, I think it's only if there's a battery in the circuit that it becomes a serious sort of fire hazard. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll maybe stick that on or not initially, see how things go, see how it goes without a battery at all. So, so that's uh, looking okay. The uh, Brake light switch is wired up, as is the the tail light. So that's all okay. At the moment, the front end just has a uh, terminal block in it. I'm going to reattach the headlight. What I've decided to do, right enough the usual rat's nest of wires. I've fitted a thermal strip in here, bent it round and zip tied it. I heated it up with a hot air gun, so it bent more easily. But essentially that's just attached to this steel reinforcement 
um, section here, which is just really thick, isn't it? Well, you can see there how thick it is. So anyway, it's attached to that, and the plan is that um, this is actually the uh, negative mains, as it were, coming in. So that's currently coming into this end terminal, and I've just got it looping around. And now I might change this actually, but so if I can work from there, I can uh, take the feed to the uh, dip switch for the headlights and um, to the horn and all that other good stuff. One of these terminals will be an earth. Obviously, there'll be an earth to the shell as well, which is down here, in fact. Um, so, yeah, I'll sort that out and hopefully keep it relatively neat and straightforward. The, uh, the light switch is up here. Uh, I couldn't find a reasonably priced replacement for the original switch. The original Lucas switch is on the B25 and the B50. Um, so I've got this little rocker switch on, which is a 12 volt rocker switch. So simple, but um, hopefully effective. So I'll just use that as an on-off switch for the headlights. Um, I think that's about it. So yeah, my objective really is just to keep it as simple as possible and uh, increase the, uh, the, or reduce the risk of um, bad connections by minimizing the number of connections in the first place and making sure the ones I do have are, are sound. So all these off the, um, the dip switch, all these connectors are just crimped on um, little pins which will fit into this terminal strip quite easily. So work in progress, but um, so far so good. Yeah, so this old timing light, I just couldn't get the bike to start with it. Uh, I think it just takes all the life out of the spark. So that's finally gets pensioned off after probably 40 years. Uh, so I've invested in a, a better, this, this AccuSpark. Um, still pretty good value for money, I think, but uh, this one is powered by 12 volts, so you're not relying on the energy of the spark system, the ignition system, and it has um, this display on the back, so you can actually measure the uh, the angle, the advanced retard angle compared to the uh, the strobe light. So yeah, in effect, you can measure how far out the spark is. So this should be much better. We'll give this a go. Um, was doing bang on the mark, um, which is here, uh, while it was idling. But as it um, started to auto advance, I increased the revs. It was moving ahead of the mark. Uh, yes, because it was advancing, wasn't it? So basically, it needs to be retarded slightly, I would say. Okay, so having adjusted the timing, that did seem pretty much bang on. <laughs> if anything, it could be very slightly more advanced. So I'll just tweak it a, a fraction and then lock it off for the time being. Okay, that's about right. Because this moves. Um, Twice as far, or half as far, or maybe that. Going around half engine speed, isn't it? So moving this a tiny bit moves more on the crank. I've got that the right way around. Good. So with the timing right, I can stick this cover back on there. These screws are pretty mangled. I'll maybe. 
work out the uh, thread and uh, get some placements because the so the heads are pretty worn but they'll do for now okay when i ran the the engine to to do the timing uh this seems to have blown up this voltmeter i used to have this voltmeter on my um a65 bsa and it was quite handy actually just to see what's going on uh, just straight across the battery in effect on the on the uh, a65 so I'll just show you the battery voltage i thought it might be useful on this since i had it knocking around anyway i thought it'd be a way of seeing whether i was gonna blow up a lithium battery or not but instead i seem to have actually blown up the, the complete meter so you know in okay, some pretty sort of random stuff while the engine was running it was um, flickering wildly showing various things but uh each time i connected something different seems to happen so i think there must be a lot of noise on this uh, on the electrics on this bike now and it's probably just blown up the, the cheap voltmeter Hmm, oh well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So I think that'll do for now. Uh, I guess the next steps are to finish off the wiring and get the, the light light working and I'll wire up these uh, warning lights. There are three of them, which seems a bit over the top. I guess on the um, on the, the standard original version, it uh, had a, probably had an oil light. So I know the B25 had an oil light. I don't think the B50 did, but it um, seems to have three lights anyway. High beam and indicators, I assume, are what the other two are for. But I only really need one, I think, for the uh, high beam. So I'll wire that up and just put the others in as dummies, I think, for now. Um, the other thing I need to do definitely is to check out this front tyre, or get a new front tyre. This one's very badly perished and it's not holding air either. The back one isn't quite so bad, but um, probably needs replacing as well. And I can check out the brakes while I'm at it. Meanwhile, I need to um, get onto the registration process, start working out how that can be progressed. Um, good, okay. Well, that's it for now then. Thanks for watching.